Welcome back to another great episode of Low Car Car Show. We return to Seal Beach, California for more beautiful sunshine, weather, and automobiles from the Seal Beach Classic Car Show. We're going to jump right in and show you what the Southern California Classic Car Scene is all about. Well, while we're here at the Seal Beach Classic Car Show, it's got to be my favorite place in the whole world to be. So this year's car show, it's our 29th year, and this year we've had over 600 cars on the ground. These here in the grass have all been invited, and uh, we've got about 25,000 people that are coming. Uh, great uh, broadcast, you'll enjoy this on television as well. But what's really cool about this car show is it's really all about the Southern California classic car culture. Right here on the beach, right at the pier at Seal Beach, uh, right on Main Street, the idyllic Main Street of Seal Beach, which is just full of great shops, restaurants, great places uh, to get just about anything you want. Your typical quaint little small town that takes you back easily 50 years in America. And, and then add that, you've got the cars to take you back as well. So sun, surf, and sand at Seal Beach. It's a great place to see great cars. So if you didn't make this year's show, plan on coming next year. It's always the last Saturday in April, right here in Seal Beach. Here is a husband and wife team, both with cars in the show. The Hurtados can't wait to tell you about their cars, so I'm going to turn it over to them. Hi, I'm Glenn Hurtado, and this is my 69 uh, Super Sport 396 Chevelle. I'm Sharon Hurtado, and this is my 69 Volkswagen Convertible. Let me show you my Chevelle. No, I want to show you my car first. No, no, my, no, no, my no. Convertible. Let me show you my Chevelle. No, let's show mine first. I've always loved having a Volkswagen. I've always wanted one. And finally, my husband bought me one for my birthday of last year. We did the interior, put on new upholstery, and put new wheels and new rims on her. And my husband bought me this license plate that says, that says Granny B. Dub. My grandson came up with the idea and I think it fits perfect. And I love my car. He does think his car's better because he's a muscle car guy. You know how those uh, are. <laughs> now, the car belonged to a friend of mine. And if you're from California, you grow up with cars. And uh, I've always wanted a muscle car. And 69's kind of special because uh, I was in Vietnam in 69, I got a 69, and then I also bought my wife a 69. So kind of a special year. Plus this is a 396 Super Sport. Uh, you know, it's kind of a special car. I'm a stalker guy. I like to keep the car stock. I do have a different intake and a different uh, carburetor, but basically the car stock. It runs about 360 horses, 396 cubic inch, has a Muncie uh, 20 uh, transmission, four speed. There's a manufacturer out here that does suspension called Hotchkiss, and I just uh, purchased everything they have for the car and redid my whole inspection with Hotchkiss. So it handles a lot better. Uh, but no, I like the look, I like the standard look. And, you know, in California, there's always somebody who can go faster or have a bigger motor, so I'm happy with what I have. I just wanted something we could do together and, you know, take care of the cars and do some shows together. She's not into the cars as much as I am, but we do have fun as a couple going places. Here is a supercar owned by Bob Griffith at the Seal Beach Classic Car Show. Now this isn't a classic car, but like we told you, there are 30 classes of cars being shown at Seal Beach. Bob is one of those business owners of Seal Beach and a car collector, so you can understand the appeal of this show for him. For me personally, I'm always been, I'm a car guy, I like cars, it's a great opportunity to see a variety of beautiful cars that you don't get to see other places. And it's, actually as a businessman on Main Street, it's great for the town, it's great for the city of Seal Beach. Uh, people come here, they're, they're, they're a, great, a great crowd. I've been, I always liked fast cars, uh, even in high school. I always bought the cars that I could afford, which wasn't very much. Uh, sold mine a 69 GTO to buy the drugstore. 
Uh, 30th anniversary, my wife bought me a 69 GTO Judge. So that's, it's kind of in the family. Uh, I have some race cars. I have uh, fast cars. Uh, uh, Chevelle 454. I've got a McLaren Mercedes. I've got uh, the, the Gullwing here, which is SLS. Anything with horsepower that's, that's fun to drive. And, and I have some race cars that I race Bonneville and, and blown alcohol drag cars. I'm just, you know, it's a hobby. It's a hobby for me. Have you ever seen a 1963 Pontiac Tempest? What about a convertible? Michael Branton tells us why you may not have ever seen a convertible 63 before. He's a Pontiac man, but you don't have to be to appreciate the rarity of this beauty. A 63 Tempest is a very rare car. And in convertible form, they made about 500 of them. What's rare about them is they have an independent rear suspension and a transaxle similar to a second generation Corvette. Uh, it's a three-speed manual, about 500 are made, probably less than 100 is this now. And if, uh, when you see them, they're really beat up, not nearly in this condition. I've had the car about a month now. Interesting story, a buddy of mine had the car, and he purchased about a couple years ago, and he's done a lot of the restoration work. I actually see the car today. I love the car, but there's some things I like to do. Um, I'm probably gonna put a tri-power or, or a dual car on it. Um, gonna do the interior, I'm gonna put a uh, 63 tack, no, tack in the car. Uh, detail the interior, detail the engine, and, uh, and rub out the paint also. Actually, I'm a Pontiac guy. I've got a 64 and a 66 GTO also. So I've always liked uh, uh, Pontiacs. And these are very rare, as I stated. Uh, in the 63s in particular, I like the body style and it's convertible. I've never owned a convertible before. So it's the first and only convertible car I've owned. And my wife loves it. She gets to ride with the top down and enjoy the hair blowing in the wind. It's, a, it's a really cool for her also. The Seal Beach Classic Car Show is a great place to rub elbows with some industry celebs. Host of Wheeler Dealers, Mike Brewer is one of those you might run into like we did. We're going to take a second and see what he says about the Seal Beach Classic Car Show. Hey, you know what's great nice. about the Seal Beach Classic Car Show is you never know who you're going to run into. Here's my dear friend, Mike Brewer. We all know Mike from uh, Wheeler Dealer on uh, television, so Mike, welcome. To Seal Beach. Well, it's like another day in paradise, isn't it? This is fantastic. <laughs> what a great show. Thank you. Yeah, you know, we've got so many cars here, all kinds of different varieties. Now, we know that you know cars. Yes, sir. What, what do you think of this show so far today? You know, the one thing about being here in California, especially Southern California, for a global traveler, for a person who gets around, you people should know that this is considered on a global scale as the center of the car guy world. You know, wherever right. I am, if I'm in Germany, Holland, England, Australia, whenever I say I'm Seal Beach, Huntington Beach, I'm in Southern California, they go, hot rods. Yeah. That's the home of hot rods and car culture in Southern California. So this is a, a fantastic place to be in. It's almost a blessing to be working here at the same time. Making my show here at Seal Beach is brilliant. Yeah, so amazing. We're just delighted that you could come and enjoy this, this weather and you know, we have a lot more cars to see. So let's go down the pier and check them out. Yeah, I'd love to. Yes, fantastic. Right. Yeah. See you later. The Low Car Car Show presented by Original Parts Group is brought to you by ARP. Proudly made in the USA, the world leader in fastener technology. Original Parts Group, world-class restoration parts. Low car, quality, plain and simple. And by National Parts Depot, make your dream happen. We're going to take a break from the owners and talk to CEO and founder of Original Parts Group, Dave Leonard, and find out what he thinks of the Seal Beach Classic Car Show. Greetings from Seal Beach, California. I'm Dave Leonard, CEO of Original Parts Group and founder. This is our fifth year in a row uh, celebrating this wonderful car show here in the city of Seal Beach, California. And we've got our A-bodies represented and we've got some Cadillacs out here and just a whole lot of fun. It's a great show. We got some great cars on display up in our booth, right up near the sand. And uh, Cadillacs, Chevelles, GTO, Cutlass 442, 1970, the pinnacle of the muscle car era. Come on down and see them. 
What we've got here is a 1959 Porsche Cabriolet 1600 Super. It has a hard top on it today. This car was ordered by my parents, uh, picked up at the factory in 1959. It's been in the family since 1959. It came with both tops, the soft top and the hard top. Originally, it was uh, delivered with rudge hubs or knockoff wheels. What you see here is essentially the way the car was, the way my father had it in 1959. It has about, uh, the engine's been modified it has around 95 horsepower and it's uh, 1725 cc's and it has some performance wheels and performance suspension. They had this car in Europe, drove it all through Germany and Europe for a month and then we brought it back to the U.S. in uh, Nate, uh, say probably November 1959 and it's been in uh, California and back east ever since. It's now currently uh, permanently in California. It was restored in 2005, and this is essentially what you see here. If you had this clean 1957 Pontiac Star Chief, would you drive it or trailer it? Jack Pettit bought this one a while ago and has been working on it ever since. I wonder what his opinion is on the drive or trailer question. Let's find out. This was my uh, 57 Pontiac Star Chief. I built, uh, I got it started in 1992 and it's still still working on it. Uh, my buddy Gordon's behind you making faces. Him and I just rebuilt the motor and uh, we drive these things all over the country. So, especially in, in California. But uh, these are drivers. We drive them everywhere. My dad had one when I was a kid. We used to drive from Long Beach to New York City on old Route 66 when I was about eight years old. And I was looking for a car to build, and that's kind of what decided that for me. And they've always been a pretty car, and uh, that's what I—that's why I built it. I wanted something just a little bit different. My favorite detail, I, I believe, is. is uh, it's hard to pick just one thing, but I'd, I'd say the grill. Very unusual. Uh, real complicated to put together and make fit, but a uh, lot of chrome. Just love the chrome. Just going down to uh, up the coast with my uh, car club uh, to Santa Maria doing the West Coast Customs uh, show. And uh, we've got a lot of awards over the years. And just hanging out with, with my, my club brothers. And we're like family. And you know, we help each other with our cars and stuff. And that's what we do. This is a 1940 Ford pickup, uh, originally. Um, it has been chopped three and a half inches. It has had the cab extended 11 inches. Uh, has a convertible top that was cut down from a 36 or 37 Ford, I think. Um, the whole car has been put on a 1988 Chevy S10 frame, uh, it, a long bed frame. So that's why the car looks so long. It's longer than a standard 40 Ford. Uh, it has a uh, 383 engine with a uh, 700 R4 transmission, so it cruises really nice on the freeways. It has lots of power um, with the top up or top down. Top does go down. Uh, one of the features I really like is the bed. The wood in the back of the bed is all hand done and it matches the paint and uh, looks like a surfboard. That was the idea that I had when I first built it. I really wasn't looking for a vehicle when I found it and um, once I saw it, I just kind of had a vision that this is what it could look like. Stay tuned to see amazing automotive heritage and hear the stories from the people that cherish these chariots. It's time for Low Car Lowdown with Jeffrey Walls. As many of you know, Low Car offers a wide variety of throttle cables, kick downs, spring recurring kits, and brackets for your different applications. We're supporting things like the Holley Dominator, Edelbrock carburetors, 
even the new Street Demon that Holly's put out, as well as some of your oddball ones like the Barry Grant Six Shooter. You can get any of these brackets, spring return kits, kick downs in black stainless, our regular high-tech stainless, and we also have a universal one that's a Teflon coated cable that can give you a much subtler look for your vehicle. Another popular product in this category is the 4150 plate that's used to support the throttle cable kick down linkage on that 4150 Holley carburetor. It's become a really popular option. We also support the racing industry with very similar brackets that you can get as well. Give our tech department a call if you happen to have an application that you don't see in our catalog. Mike and Tina Trimmer are another husband and wife team that enjoy the car show. Their 1929 Ford sedan delivery has been in the family since the 1970s. There are a lot of memories that have been made with this car since then. This is my car. It's a 1929 Ford sedan delivery. It was built uh, by a guy in our car club early times in 1977 originally. It was two-tone brown and I bought it about 20 years ago and in 2006 and 7 I redid it, did a body off and now it's black as you can see. Same engine has been in it for 30 years and same we changed the transmission, same Jag rear end in it so it's basically the same as it was in the 70s. So it's a good car. It's been around a long time. Uh, I was looking for a, a Ford like this. I had one when I was 18 years old, and uh, I just wanted another one. I liked it. I liked the 28, 29, the looks of them. So that's why I chose it. We just have a lot of good memories with the car. I don't know if I have a favorite because just, you know, when anybody, when they drive their cars, they have a lot of fun. Hot rods, street rods, they're just fun. But uh, we, uh, we have a lot of good memories in it. Every, every time you drive it, it's a good memory. I had one in high school. I had a coupe in high school and then I went to a sedan. It's a 1944 Deluxe two-door sedan, uh, 350 crate engine, 400 trans, 9-inch Ford rear end, and a Mustang II front end. It's a nice riding car, travel in it, and everything else. You don't want to miss the rest of the cars from sunny Seal Beach, California. The Low Car Car Show presented by Original Parts Group is brought to you by ARP, proudly made in the USA, the world leader in fastener technology. Original Parts Group, world-class restoration parts. Low Car, quality, plain and simple. And by National Parts Depot, make your dream happen. Resto Parts Restoration, powered by Original Parts Group. Gas tanks, one of the most important, if not the most important thing when you start working on a classic car. Replacing, fixing, cleaning, tearing apart, checking for rust, you always have to go to the gas tank first. Okay, so what do you do when you get a gas tank? You get new straps, uh, new rubber uh, anti-squeak kits, uh, new braces sometimes when you have to replace some of the rusty parts on there. So what we have here is the strap that holds the gas tank to the brace underneath the trunk. Okay, we're looking at the top of the tank. And what we have here is a rubber anti-squeak kit. This goes in between the, the two pieces of metal to keep the noise uh, from, from rattling or shaking or hearing any kind of weird noise when you drive down the road. So what do most people do? They end up putting it up on the strap because that's what they think it's for. That is actually incorrect, okay? What you're supposed to do is, this is really, really tight up against the gas tank. It does not need a strap or anything up against it. What it, the gas tanks do typically do is they rub up against the trunk floor. This is where this piece actually gets installed. This is the top of the tank. This strap is cut to length. You don't have to glue it, but it's a good idea. And you mount it on top of the tank so when you push the tank into the trunk floor, up against its brace, it creates a cushion into that brace and eliminates any squeaks or noises coming from the gas tank area when driving down the road. Sometimes you don't know you did it and it'll be impossible to find where it's coming from unless you're actually underneath the car while the car is driving and I don't really recommend that. This is my uh, 1961 Chevy Corvette. Uh, I just picked this up uh, about five, six months ago. Uh, 
it was turned on to me from a friend of mine that knew I was in the cars and uh, his stepfather had passed away and his mother wanted to sell their car that they've had in the family for 30 plus years. Uh, it wasn't running, it was in a, a barn garage. Uh, been sitting for seven years, had about an inch of dust on it and he knew I was in the car so um, I absolutely ran out there as soon as he sent me a picture of it and said, don't touch it, I'll be right there. So we um, went out there and negotiated a, a deal and brought it home and basically went through the whole thing and uh, got it running from ignition, carburetors, spark plug wires, fuel filters, and uh, eventually got it running and believe it or not the paint came alive and I'm one of those lucky lucky owners to own a 61 Chevy Corvette so it's something that's going to stay in our family and we're going to pass on down to our kids eventually so we're very happy happy with it to say the least wow what a classic car show they put on in southern california there were so many cars at the Seal Beach Classic Car Show, we couldn't possibly show you all of them. If you're an automobile enthusiast, you need to get to this show in person. That's all for now from SoCal, but come back to the next Low Car Car Show for our Low Car Open House and take a look at how we make the quality parts you love.